Greetings and welcome to a new video about a MOSFET circuit. This is our second example. In this example we will look at the circuit where we have two DC sources and also four resistors. So it's a little bit complicated in the first example. Of course we will work out everything in our calculations and now we'll verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at the circuit. We have this example. We have the four resistors as I said before. Two DC volt sources VDD and VSS. And we have for the N channel enhancement MOSFET the following parameters. We have a threshold voltage of 2.5 volts and also the conduction parameter KN of 52.1 milliamps per square volts. And these are the values of the components in the circuit. Now we would like to calculate the following drain current as shown here. ID, the gates to source voltage VGS and also the drain source voltage, which is VDS, these three unknowns here. As said in the previous example about the MOSFET circuit, we know that the ID and IS are equal to each other because it's a symmetric device and the gate current is zero. Okay, let's look at our solutions. We assume that the saturation region for this MOSFET is valid. That means it works in the linear region and the current is constant and we can use the square law of expression for the drain current as a function of the gate to source voltage. So we will come back to that shortly. That means for, a, uh, for the saturation region we need to fulfill these two conditions. So the gate to source voltage must be larger than or equal to the threshold voltage, in this case 2.5 volts. The VDS, this voltage must be larger than the VGS minus the threshold voltage. So if we know the VGS and we also know the V threshold, we have calculated for the drain to source voltage must be also larger than this value. That's also what we need to check later. But we assume first the saturation region and we work it out and check it at the end. Okay, solutions, we start at this node G, which is very nice and handy way to start with your calculations because that is the node voltage at this G. We can calculate the voltage at this node by using the voltage divider rule. That is given by this expression. In this case we need to be really careful because now we have this VSS which is not ground as in example number one. Now, in order to have this voltage here at this node we can again do the voltage divider rule. So it's R2 over R1 plus R2 times the complete voltage between this node all the way to that node. But that is of course VDD minus VSS. And you add another VSS to that because that is lowered or increased by this VSS source. That's given here. So if the VSS was for example zero, you get only R2 over R1 plus R2 times VDD. Because this is zero, that is zero. So this is the expression you need to use. If we now substitute the values given here in this example, you get this expression and it will give us minus 5 volts. Now, one note here, this is minus 5 volts. That doesn't mean that this MOSFET is off, since we have here for the threshold voltage 2.5 and we don't fulfill this. That is not true. We need to check the VGS, not the VG. So that is just a note here before we move on. Okay, now we... Continue with the Kirchhoff's voltage law at an input loop. That is actually this part. So this loop here in this input. That is VG. The node voltage here is equal to the VGS voltage here plus the voltage across RS. That is given by the Ohm's law here. RS times IS plus the voltage here which is VSS. This node voltage is of course a battery which has a value of minus 15 volts and here a, a plus 15 volts. That is the symbol for the two batteries here or two DC voltage sources. Now we have this. What we can do is the following. We can also check the drain current expression since transformation region is valid. The square law of expression is also valid. That means the ID is equal to Kn times the quantity here squared. VGS minus the threshold. We know that the IS and ID are equal to each other so we can say this is also IS so we can also say this is ID. And if we bring these two equations together or substitute this equation in here as ID, we get this. So VG is equal to this expression. You can see in the expression that we only have a VGS as an unknown. Why? Let's substitute the values. Minus 5 from this step. 
VG is unknown. This is 1000, so 1 kilo ohms. We have the KN from the transistor MOSFET parameter. VG is still unknown, but this is minus or 2.5 here for the threshold. And VSS is minus 5. So everything is known except the VGS. So we can consider that as the unknown. And we have an equation we can solve. Let's simplify this further. We can bring this minus 15 to the left side, plus 15 so will be then plus 10. And also multiply this out will be then 52.1. Now we have a nice expression we can solve. We can use this. We can solve it, of course, step by step, but you can also use a solver. That is uh, much more easier. If you solve it, you get two solutions. One of them is 2.11 volts for the VGS. Another one is 2.87 volts. Which one do we take? Let's see also that in the graph. This is the graph, which is the parabola for the right side. And you can see this horizontal line, which is this 10. We have two intersections. One of them is here, which is here 2.11 approximately, which is this. And you see also the Y value. And the right side is another intersection, exact same curve actually, but for the second intersection, you see the 2.87 approximately. And again, the Y value is 10. But which one do we take? Now we know we need to fulfill the saturation region conditions, which is then the VGS must be larger or equal to V threshold. This is lower. So this is definitely, and this is higher than threshold. So this is invalid. So it could be mathematically correct, but it is not useful in the circuit. And this is correct because it is valid, it is larger than the 2.5. So we can say the VGS must be in this case 2.87 volts for this circuit. Okay. Now then we get, we since we know the VGS, we can now use the square law expression for the current for the ID. So ID is then 0 0.0521 times the VGS minus the threshold squared. Then you get 7.30 milliamps. Now, once we know this, we can move on and then calculate VDS because this current is known and this also because these are equal to each other. So we can also say this is then the voltage here and also the voltage here is known because the RD and RS is known. So we can set up the Kirchhoff's voltage law at the output loop. That will be then VDD is equal to the RD times ID plus VDS plus RS times IS plus VSS. That's shown here. Now we know ID and IS are equal to each other, so let's bring them together. That is RD plus RS in the parentheses times ID. And then we have the expression. But we know we want the VDS, so let's express VDS in terms of the rest of the parameters. Now we get this. So we place, replace everything here except the VDS on the left side and then flip the equation. You get this. So VDD minus VSS minus the RD plus R1 in the parentheses times ID. Now let's substitute everything. You know, it is minus, but again, minus 15. So this is then plus 30. And the rest of the parameters, and we know that this is the current ID here. So we can just substitute that. So everything is now. So VDS will be then 8.61. But let's also check that second condition, because if this is must, if this is true, it must be, of course, also fulfill this saturation region condition, which says VGS minus V threshold. So if this is true, yes, let's check that 2.87 minus 2.5. This is 0 0.37, which is definitely smaller than this one. So this is larger than that one. You can also say it like that. That means this is also valid. So we can say the saturation region of operation is valid. So assumption in the beginning is now checked. Okay, let's bring the values here. These are the solutions for these three unknowns. Let's let's also look at the simulation result to check our verification calculations here. Okay, this is the circuit. You can see the R1, R2, RD, RS here. You see also the MOSFET M1 and also the gate current measurement here, the source current measurement, the drain current. The gate voltage here at this node. You see also the voltage across the gate to source and also the drain to source. You see also the two voltage sources VDD and VSS. Remember this is of course a battery which, con which is connected with a minus sign here and this is connected with a plus sign there. That is actually what this is this meaning. So the meaning of VDD here means you put here a plus because it is plus and then you connect it here and since there must be something which is a ground 
and the polarity of the ground or the condition of the ground that's determined by these two DC voltage source in between. That's shown here. So this is the ground. So everything is referred that, to that point if you look at the node voltages. Now let's look at the solutions the, in the simulation. You can see the ID is 7.30 milliamps, exactly as we have calculated, also for the IS. And the IG is very small, so 2. Point, let's say 9 femto amps, and femto is 10 to the power minus 15, so you can consider this as very small, almost zero. This is also what we have considered. You also see the 2.787 volts for the VGS, also true. You saw 8.61 volts for the VDS, so everything is correct. You see also this current this is just an extra, so it's 100 micro amps. You can calculate that by looking at the voltage at this node and that node, and then this node minus that one divided by the 300 kilo ohms. This VG is minus 5 volt, as we have calculated, so this is also true. Okay, one extra note for the parameters in the uh, MOSFET, eMOSFET for the SPICE model. This is the model I have used in the TINA TI SPICE. I have used the level 1 SPICE model or Shishman Hodge model. You can see here, this is the model I have used. And you can see here the threshold voltage, which is 2.5, so you can just enter that for yourself. You can also make it 6 or 5, which, which what the threshold voltage is just for your MOSFET. And this is the beta, which is here 104.2 milliamps per square volt. Well, what is that? So this is the threshold, but what is this? Let's see let the, let the SPICE parameter. This SPICE parameter is called beta here, but it is an official term is KP. And KP here is given by this expression or is related to KN by this expression. And W and L is the width and the length of your MOSFET, the physical dimensions. KP we need to calculate, but we know uh, that this KN is here, so we need to relate that to Kp in the actual model. So in the default setting, the W and the L are given by 10 to the power minus 5 each, so 10 micrometers. So we can just also use that. That means the ratio here is 1. So the Kp over 2 is then Kn. That means Kp is 2 times Kn. So what your value is for Kn, you need to just double that in this model. That means in order to get from 52.1 to the actual Kp, you just double that and you make 104.2 milliamps per square volts. That is what you need to reuse here in order to get the correct values in your simulations. So this is now what we have seen and everything is now verified. So you can see that this is indeed correct. All right, guys, this is for our second example about the MOSFET circuit and N-channel enhancement MOSFET. We see that we have two DC voltage sources and also four resistors. And we have worked out this in the calculation, also verified this in our SPICE simulations. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.